This is Freya. She's a porpoise. That's a small whale. Freya is in the Guinness Book of Records because she's the oldest known porpoise in the world. She's 28 years old and she lives in a research center in Denmark together with two other porpoises. If she had lived outside in the wild, she would probably have died at age seven, which is the average lifespan for a porpoise. Porpoises have dropped dramatically in numbers in recent years in Denmark, maybe because of lack of fish due to oxygen depletion. Now let's move on. This is marine biologist Magnus Wahlberg from SDU, our university. His research is aimed at improving wild porpoises' living habitats. But the sea is a great big thing, and while you can train porpoises, you know, a little bit like you can train dolphins. They don't usually tend to go or swim where the researchers want them to. So Magnus needs our help to discover more knowledge about this species. And this is where citizen science comes in. But more about Freya and Magnus a little later. First, we will show how to connect researchers and citizens. Back in 2016, we set out to investigate how the interaction between researchers and citizens could be enhanced for the benefit of both parties. We quickly discovered that citizen science can bridge researchers and citizens and facilitate new forms of collaboration and dialogue. Thus, we have established the SDU Citizen Science Knowledge Center that provides services to researchers within all fields and facilitate an ongoing dialogue with the public. We run the center together with library and other SDU staff. The last couple of years, we have collaborated with dozens of researchers and hundreds of societal partners. But what is citizen science exactly? Citizen science is a set of research uh, methods that enables researchers and citizens to work together. And this collaboration always involved one of the elements of inclusion, contribution, and dialogue based on openness and respect. Citizen science began back in the 1980s within bird watching and the monitoring of other wildlife. But today, it's much, much more. It covers everything from old manuscripts to personal medicine and it covers everything from crowdsourcing of data to extreme citizen science, where citizens form the research questions and work with researchers on every step of the way. Citizen science is happening around us all the time. Researchers and citizens work together every day bridging the gap. An estimate there is at least 3,000 ongoing citizen science projects and this presents new possibilities. Citizen science can solve potentially wicked problems. Climate change, extreme poverty, pandemics, health inequalities, and natural disasters are just a few of the examples where citizens and researchers can work together for partial solutions to a better world. Citizen science is a new paradigm for research that can activate local communities to a common cause. This is an example from Barcelona, where local NGOs, local researchers and citizens teamed up on a project to prevent social stigma for people with mental illness as explored by the COACT project it shows that citizen science is very much local. But citizen science is also global, and you can participate in research from your phone or computer within a minute or two. You can help researchers unlock the secrets of the universe. 
or maybe participate in the project Jellyfish in Greece, 22 new species can be contributed to citizen science. Wow, that sounds fantastic, Thomas. But even though Freya is cute and Nordic, and jellyfish are amazing, we will show you two other examples of citizen science from SDU. In the pilot project Climate Future Fiction, researchers connect and interact with local high schools in Denmark. The students and the researchers work together on data collection and analysis. The high school students are writing short stories about climate fear, and these stories are research data. Furthermore, the students interpret their peer stories, and this is also research data that provides new insights for the researchers. So far, six high schools have participated and we have collected 152 short stories. But what does the research data say so far? It shows that young people in Denmark have a dystopian view to climate change. And this comes with two major observations. First, the world will be a more dangerous place due to climate change. And second, policy and other fixes of the crisis will fail due to greed, incompetence, and mismanagement of the crisis. So yes, citizen science can unlock many new discoveries. The researchers are currently running another pilot. And now to something completely different. In the citizen science project, a healthier southern Denmark, we ask the citizens in our region to prioritize medical research uh, project and decide which shall be funded. Collaborate with two media partners, and the goal is to bridge research with citizens' desire of public welfare. It's a project with huge reach. Just as importantly, however, the participating medical researchers see great value in connecting with citizens. But what exactly do we mean by huge reach? Well, since 2017, the project have reached 3 million people in our region through television, social media, and other platforms. But not only that, 67,000 people have voted for their favorite research project. As you can see, citizen science can mobilize the power of many. And if you as citizens participate in research, decision makers will listen to the output and act based on that. In that way, citizen science will support democracy. Also, the access to research is a universal human right, just as it's a citizen's duty to participate in democracy, and citizen science can contribute to both. So, are you ready to change the world one step at a time by engaging in citizen science? If yes, how can you interact and research with researchers and decision makers that has different answers in different countries? We urge universities and citizens to connect and bridge by identifying and collaborating on research relevant to your region. The power of many can potentially give solution to the big wicked problems we face nowadays. This can be done in many ways. You can participate in existing research projects through your phone or your computer and connect with researchers that way. You can also reach out to local NGOs, local media and decision makers. Who knows? You might share the same questions and the same goals. In connection, town hall meetings and community workshops might discover new local issues. And we have also discovered a huge potential in bringing citizen science to public schools, high schools and education systems in general. We have seen how citizen science and new knowledge is developed in dialogue between universities, local communities and local education systems. 
but most importantly, together you must address a topic relevant for your region or maybe a global challenge. And this brings us back to Freya and Magnus. Freya and her fellow porpoises are living proof that citizen science works. In Denmark, this is a relevant research project because we have a huge coastline and many people live close to the water. And that means 14,000 observations in the Marine Tracker app over the last years. The more we know about porpoises, the more we can protect them. Citizen science can be engaging and it can bridge universities with society. Thank you for your attention.